controversial subjects. The theories expressed are not the only possible interpretation. The viewer is invited to make a judgment based on all available information. Tonight on Sightings, a psychic shocks police with visions that lead them to the body of a slain child. After five minutes with her, she had 100% of my attention. Now, can she find the murderer? Then, startling videotape evidence may prove a monster lurks in Lake Champlain. We took the camcorder out and then champed, or several champs were back again. Welcome to Sightings. I'm Tim White. Many psychic detectives claim a high success rate in solving crimes. There are now a number of cases where police can actually admit that they've been helped by a psychic. One such case occurred in 1979 when psychic detective Kathleen Ray helped police find the body of a little girl who'd been murdered. The Sightings has asked Kathleen Ray to return to the scene of the crime to see if she can now identify the murderer. Fresno, in the heart of California's fertile Central Valley. It's a place where you can still find tranquil family farms, but it's also a place where tragedy has struck. On February 3rd, 1979, eight-year-old Victoria de Santiago, her sister Eva, and their dog all vanished. What really happened that day is still just speculation. The girls were last seen together at a neighborhood store. The counterman said that he remembers the girls coming in and he told them to go out because they couldn't bring the dog in. They may have been abducted outside. What we figured is that perhaps whoever this individual was, was there in the parking lot. Perhaps a stranger grabbed the girl's dog and used him to lure Victoria and Eva into his car. One day later, three-year-old Eva was found. Victoria and her dog were still missing. She was a very beautiful little girl. She was always very protective of her sister. She said that uh, her sister told the man to, to let her go and that she would stay and just to let her not to hurt her sister and to let her go and I would just I just always remember that and so from that I know that she was you know, just a, a very good person the police exhausted all leads days then weeks passed with no new clues no witnesses came forward and in my sleep I was dreaming uh, about what can I do what do what other avenues can I go? And it came to me in the dream. I mean, I sat right up, and her name was Kathleen Ray. Kathleen Ray is a psychic detective. She uses the powers of her mind to help law enforcement solve crimes. She claims she can see missing children, bodies, criminals, and for the past 20 years, she's been remarkably accurate. Kathleen Ray has gained a reputation for accuracy, even among skeptics. Intuition is something that everybody has, and the intuitive sense is a sense of feeling. But these feelings are something I've educated, like you've educated your other senses, to where I can use them more fully. Despite skepticism from the police, the De Santiago family asked that Kathleen help find Victoria. When there's only uh, a light shining out of total darkness, you're going to walk towards that light. Whether it's the wrong way, the right way, it doesn't matter. It's a direction. I was told that a psychic was being brought in and I was going to fly to San Jose to meet this psychic. And I thought, I'm going to fly up there and I'm going to meet this lady wearing gypsy clothes. She's going to take me into this house. We're going to burn some incense. We're going to rattle some bones. She's going to throw some dust around in the air and tell me something that's totally irrelevant to the case. I am not doing what you see in these great, what I call horror movies. I don't suddenly grab my head and fall down and say, oh, they hit me in the head, or oh, this poor, poor person's been stabbed. I don't do that. I'm more like an objective bystander. The psychic part of this was just way off. It didn't make sense to me. How somebody 180 miles from here is going to tell me how to find a body in my town. It's really taking feelings up and bringing a whole picture and holding that picture long enough. Just like going to a movie or, or turning the TV on and seeing a picture in front of your face. I didn't believe it. 
But after five minutes with her, she told me enough stuff that she had 100% of my attention. I was believing in her. It was the beginning of an unlikely partnership. The sergeant, the psychic, and the family. All I could think of asking her was, you know, did she, did she have to go through a lot of pain? I felt that uh, Victoria at this point was still barely alive, just barely. The family hoped that they weren't too late, that Victoria was still alive and Kathleen could lead them to her. She told me the road she was on was not a well-traveled road. I saw this plowed field. I knew the field had just been plowed. Kay said she's laying parallel to the road. I feel she's laying parallel to the road with her face towards the road. I'll see uh, the bushes, the trees, uh, the uh, poultry farm. Kay said that when I found the body, there would be chickens. She said, I get chickens around the body. Chickens, chickens, chickens. There has to be a farmer whose name starts with an S. There has to be a street that starts with an L. There has to be a windmill. After my interview with Kay, as I was walking out the door, and I'll, I'll never forget this, she stopped me, she grabbed my arm, and she said, Tim, find the dog and you'll find Victoria. Back in Fresno, pursuing conventional leads, Sergeant McFadden's partner, Detective Popejoy, found the dog. Detective Popejoy was at the house where the dog was found. He verified it was the dog. So I asked Detective Popejoy, I said, well, are there chickens out there? So I asked the ranch, the farmer there, I said, is there a poultry ranch here? He said, yes, just south of here, about a quarter of a mile, there's a uh, abandoned poultry ranch. Detective Popejoy, he came, he got the call on the dog, and he came out here and talked to the farmer that found the dog, and he found it down here a little ways and brought it back to this house. And when I was talking to him on the phone, he said there was no windmill. It was a situation that I'll never forget as long as I live, was him on the phone to me, and we are talking about this windmill, and I'm telling him there's no windmill here, and the man, the landowner standing behind me said, oh yeah, you just walked by one, it's in the front yard. As I'm telling him things that should be there, and he's confirming these back to me that Kay said would be there, I'm getting higher and higher, and wow, wow, we are... This gal is it. This gal does know what she's talking about. We immediately called for officers to respond, and it was from him telling me what she saw 145 miles away. The police dispatched a search team that had been briefed on Kathleen's psychic visions. The L, they were on Leonard Street. The S, it was on the mailbox, the first letter of the farmer's last name. And by the side of the road, they found Victoria. Her naked body was in an irrigation ditch under the largest tree in the area, all as Kathleen had described. Victoria had been sexually assaulted, then left to die. She had been killed like an animal, and she was still alive, in a coma, suffering right there in the, in the little trench. And Kathleen Ray found that, as she described it to the T. After the body was discovered, Kathleen returned to her home in San Jose, and the police continued to search for Victoria's killer. But 13 years later, the murderer is still at large. Sightings has brought Kathleen Ray back to Fresno, back to the place where Victoria's body was found, to get new psychic impressions. When I go to the man that did this, uh, he has stubby hands, um, and they're hands of a laborer. I don't feel like he's here anymore. I want to go further south to a town, start with an S, and that he's working down there now. This man is not very tall. I would say, oh, maybe five foot nine. I feel this man has killed another child since then. There is a wife or a girlfriend he goes back to at times, and I feel like it's probably a wife, and he's not with her all the time. And she's frightened of him. I know she knows he's violent. He's a, he could be a very violent person. And had we had a drawing of him like I can do now with the police artist, she'd have recognized him on television. If you believe Kathleen Ray, this is a charcoal drawing of Victoria de Santiago's murderer. He killed Victoria, and Kathleen believes another child since then, and he's still out there. I believe there's the, it could be solved. I, somebody out there, somebody somewhere has got to know more about this, but they've never come forward. Although Kathleen's work in this case proved to be extremely accurate, cases like this are the exception, not the rule. And the use of psychics in police investigations is still not accepted by many departments around the country. Kathleen Ray's case was one of those cases. And the hits were so specific, and the data checked out all the way down the line, from the reporters, to the psychics themselves, to the families of the victims, to the police. Um, it, it was rather 
unnerving. But for the de Santiago family, a psychic detective made a difference. The discovery of their daughter 13 years ago has brought the family a small measure of peace. Thank you, God. Thank you for finding uh, Toria's body. Thank you for giving me Kathleen Ray. And now, they hope her vision of the killer will bring the case to a close. My only release of mental anguish is to say something positive, warn people, look at they're not just going to steal your car, they're going to steal your child. Is this the face of a murderer? Kathleen Ray sees him in her mind's eye when she thinks of Victoria. If you have additional information about this crime, please contact the Fresno Police Department. Despite the good work of psychic detectives like Kathleen Ray, there are unscrupulous people posing as psychics who prey on unsuspecting families. How do you protect yourself? Well, experts suggest that you follow all recommendations of the police. And if you do contact psychics, thoroughly check out their references. Make sure they don't have criminal records. And never give them money up front. Coming up, does an underwater creature terrorize the citizens of upstate New York? I started screaming in fear. Startling videotape may prove a monster lurks in Lake Champlain. Recently, sightings half a world apart have renewed interest in the possibility that lake monsters are real. At Loch Ness in Scotland, Operation Deep Scan tracked a large creature through the water for more than two miles. At Lake Champlain in New York State, a sightings crew has been monitoring strange lake activity reported by dozens of credible eyewitnesses. It's hard to imagine, but the natural serenity of Lake Champlain is being disturbed. Disturbed by a monster reportedly lurking just below the surface of the lake. Sightings of a long serpent-like creature have been reported for nearly 300 years. A pioneer's powder horn dated September 29, 1700, there's the earliest recorded image of the Lake Champlain monster. Sightings have continued to the present day, but aren't often discussed in public. Probably 99% of the people have seen it, but they won't talk about it because you do get some ridicule. Lake Champlain is located on the border between New York and Vermont, extending northward into Quebec province in Canada. The locals have affectionately dubbed the monster Champ, but there is surprisingly little publicity or commercialism associated with this sea serpent. Only now, in the wake of new scientific information about the Loch Ness Monster, have eyewitnesses felt that they won't be ridiculed for coming forward. You could see underneath the water, it was a huge black mat, it was just monster. It was scary, it was, it was that big. It was, you could see it had a definite body, shape to a body. Then you could see it definitely had a neck and a head. And then all of a sudden, up out of this water came this big black thing. I mean, it was huge, black and shiny, and then it went away. There wasn't a ripple or anything. And I got the pictures of it just going under the water, and you can see the little bumps, two bumps. I started as a disbeliever. I went right on past being a believer into a knower. There's four of us were out on the boat um, looking, just taking an evening sail. And it was at that point, with no expectations of anything, that we began to see some very strange things going on. Up came the neck and the head, literally like my hand is doing. It turned and it looked at me, and it turned and it went right back down into the water. We took the camcorder out and then, in fact, champ or several champs were back again. I started screaming in fear. I found myself climbing on the canvas top of my boat, which I know doesn't hold me. That's how, how scared I was. At this point, my wife and daughter spot one of the creatures out in the distance and I zoom in on it so that you can see it. And there's, you can see one of its humps sticking up out of the water. There's two, two in the middle is four, one to the left out front is five in a row. And now what we spot out there is some fins or flippers and you can see them flipping back and forth on the water. While I was in the canoe heading to the boat, my daughter saw him. She said, Dad, there's something out there. And I looked and there was Champ, you know, this neck and head out of the water moving towards Scott's bonnet. You see a creature with a long neck and a, it looks like a Volkswagen's body when, it, when you first see it in the video. It looks floating across the water. And then it stops and, you, and it starts thrashing in the water and you see a neck and head 
and then he he swings his neck around and lifts his tail up, his, swings his entire body around and lifts his neck and head out of the water entirely. My wife and I were on our way to a picnic, and on the way I decided to pull over at a lookout point just to take some uh, scenic view. Uh, I noticed something out, out in the distance about half mile out. Uh, at first, uh, I thought it was a large tree stump. It wasn't bobbing, it was moving uh, deliberately. And all of a sudden, I saw it like bend over, snake-like, and dive into the water. Considering the varying locations of the sightings and the diversity of the witnesses, among them a teacher, a therapist, a restaurant owner, an engineer, a corrections officer, the possibility of a massive hoax is highly unlikely. Certainly, residents here are not trying to cash in on the Lake Monster's notoriety. There are no souvenir shops, no public references to the creatures sighted here. Champ Quest is one notable research organization operating on the lake, headed by Dennis Hall and his partner, Richard Duell. The sole purpose is to uh, collect definitive evidence to prove the existence of the creatures. We are already convinced that they are real. We have to present this to the scientific community. There are some very big specimens uh, seen in the lake, eyewitness descriptions. The average size is 20 to 30 feet, but uh, there have been sightings where it was seen much larger. Uh, there was a sighting this year on August 1st um, on the next point down on a place called Texaco Beach. And uh, what we should do is look for some high mounds. Uh, there may be a feeding area around here. Um, there's one right about here. You're looking about 30 feet of water. Yeah. Uh, you think you could make a dive today? No problem. Let's go see if he's home. All right. A lot of people believe that there is one wretched creature that's been in the lake for a millennia. And uh, that's really absurd. There would have to be um, a breeding colony to subsist this long. Despite numerous documented sightings, few scientists can agree on what type of creature Champ is likely to be. Theories range from a snake-like Zooplodon, thought to be extinct for the last 20 million years, to another extinct reptile, the plesiosaur. There's no geological evidence that the plesiosaurs or anything like that survived beyond the Cretaceous extinction 60 million years ago. On the other hand, the coelacanth was only discovered in, in, the, in the late 1930s, that fish, and that had been extinct also for over 60 million years. If it is a plesiosaur in Loch Ness and Lake Champlain, why would these creatures survive when so many others from those eras were extinct? Crocodiles survived, and they can get up to 20 feet or more. Um, various groups survived. It's possible that in certain areas that, that some species may have survived the extinction, uh, especially when we don't even, we're not really certain as to what caused the extinction. Loch Ness and Lake Champlain are very similar geologically. They're deep glacial lakes that were at one time arms of the sea. So one could say there were marine animals living in these open lakes, and as the land rose, they could have been sort of isolated. And it, it's the same geology in both lakes. One of the most compelling pieces of evidence supporting the plesiosaur theory is this recently discovered 1938 photograph of a bizarre carcass removed from a whale's stomach. Some experts have speculated that this could be the skeleton of a baby plesiosaur consumed at sea, suggesting the plesiosaur, like the coelacanth, may not really be extinct. There may be uh, all kinds of things there that we don't know about. Uh, the thing about it is I think you have to keep an open mind and, and uh, see what, what else comes up. Do monsters really exist? Or can these pictures be explained by existing natural phenomena, like otters feeding fish or fallen logs? Eyewitnesses believe wholeheartedly in the existence of Champ, but until indisputable evidence is brought to the scientific community, the monster of Lake Champlain will remain a mystery. Coming up next, with the tragic fire at Windsor Castle, has the British family's royal curse struck again? The Queen speaks out in a special update next. Recently on sightings, we investigated a supposed curse placed on Britain's royal family. The curse dates back to the early 17th century, when members of the Ogilvy clan in Scotland were believed to have cast a spell on the Queen Mother's family and all her descendants. The Queen Mother's ancestor, the Lord of Gloms, is rumored to have murdered several members of the Ogilvy family, 
leading to a curse and perhaps centuries of doom and misfortune. The story says that what he did was to give them shelter in a small room, but then he closed them in, and eventually that room was uh, walled up, and of course they died a, a terrible death. In recent weeks, speculation about a royal curse has been increasing in Great Britain, especially in light of a string of tragedies that have befallen the royal family. Prince Charles and Princess Diana have now publicly admitted that their marriage has failed, and shortly after the news of Charles and Diana's impending separation, another tragic blow. The royal family's ancestral residence, Windsor Castle, went up in flames. The damage was extensive, and increased pressure has been placed on the royal family to assume some of the financial burden for reconstruction of the castle. Has the right honourable gentleman ruled out contributions from the royal family, and would he welcome such a contribution if it were offered? Even Queen Elizabeth has come forward to address her country's concerns. In a rare display of emotion, the Queen publicly admitted that the royal family's problems are having a traumatic effect on the monarchy. 1992 is not a year on which I shall look back with undiluted pleasure. <clears throat> In the words of one of my more sympathetic correspondents, it has turned out to be an annus horribilis. If the royal family is being plagued by a centuries-old curse, then it has come dangerously close to fulfilling its evil intent. It was a curse, after all, that some say was meant to destroy the House of Windsor and ultimately bring down the last great monarchy on Earth. We'll keep you updated in future editions of Sightings. If you've experienced what you believe to be paranormal activity in the form of UFOs, ghosts, or psychic experiences, our sightings investigative team wants to know about it. To report your sightings, call 1-900-740-SIGHT. Each call 75 cents a minute. Average call lasts two minutes and you must be 18 years or older. On the next sightings, does the ghostly victim of a brutal murder still haunt this country music hall? Our sightings investigators stalk the ghost of Hell's Gate. Then, whether you believe in guardian angels or not, don't miss the next sightings. Join us next time for new investigations into the unexplained. For Sightings, I'm Tim White. This Wednesday, it's the only music awards program where you pick the winners. Michael Jackson, U2, Eddie Murphy, and more are scheduled to appear in the 1992 Billboard Music Awards Live. This Wednesday at 8, 7 central on Fox. Now stay tuned for Likely Suspects. One such case occurred in 1979, when psychic detective Kathleen Ray helped police find the body of a little girl who'd been murdered. The sightings has asked Kathleen Ray to return to the scene of the crime to see if she can now identify the murderer. Fresno, in the heart of California's fertile Central Valley. It's a place where you can still find tranquil family farms but it's also a place where tragedy has struck. On February 3rd, 1979, eight-year-old Victoria de Santiago, her sister Eva, and their dog all vanished. What really happened that day is still just speculation. The girls were last seen together at a neighborhood store. The counterman said that he remembers the girls coming in and he told them to go out because they couldn't bring the dog in. They may have been abducted outside. What we figured is that perhaps whoever this individual was was there in the parking lot. Perhaps a stranger grabbed the girl's dog and used him to lure Victoria and Eva into his car. One day later, three-year-old Eva was found. Victoria and her dog were still missing. She was a very beautiful little girl. Controversial subjects. The theories expressed are not the only possible interpretation. The viewer is invited to make a judgment based on all available information. Tonight, on Sightings, a psychic shocks police with visions that lead them to the body of a slain child. After five minutes with her, she had 100% of my attention. Now, can she find the murderer? Then, startling videotape evidence may prove a monster lurks in Lake Champlain. We took the camcorder out and then champed, or several champs were back again. She was always very protective of her sister. She said that uh, her sister told the man to 
to let her go and that she would stay and just to let her not to hurt her sister and to let her go and oh just I just always remember that and so from that I know that she was you know, just a, a very good person the police exhausted all leads days then weeks passed with no new clues no witnesses came forward and in my sleep I was dreaming uh, about what can I do what do what else Welcome to Sightings. I'm Tim White. Many psychic detectives claim a high success rate in solving crimes. There are now a number of cases where police can actually admit that they've been helped by a psychic. 